So, so chapter five is we will deal with a probability distribution, uh, mainly discrete probability distribution. And you now this is a, a, a question for you guys to review for your midterm. Uh, what is the discrete data or what is the discrete variable? Uh, and you know, if in chapter one, that's what we do in, in terms of distinguish the difference between discrete versus continuous, right? And to be in short, discrete is when you have some data that you can count the number, right? Count one, uh, the number of siblings you have, the number of call uh, each household have, or the number of pet, meaning as long as you can count zero, one, two, three, four, five, in terms of that fixed value, then it's a discrete data or variable. And the continuous variable is when you have an interval of something. When you can break down your data into different units or different uh, different term or in term of a, a group of data and not exact, right? Uh, meaning the distance you drive from school to your house, right? Or um, the um, the temperature in the oven, right? Uh, something in that nature because we don't know the exact number or it can be break down to different unit, right? The height of the student. Um, so in the sense, those are the difference between discrete versus continuous. And now we have to do a probability distribution. Uh, to be in short, it's just basically a table that show you each data and their probability. And if you remember in chapter three, I mentioned to you guys relate to relative frequency. In chapter three, we talk about a relative frequency. Now in chapter five, that relative frequency that we did in chapter three turned to become a probability distribution. So in short, whatever we do here, we did it before. It's just that the terminology is different. The terminology back then is relative frequency now we will do a probability, okay? So the property, a probability distribution is this, ladies and gentlemen, there are two property, and it has to fit this two probability in order to be a probability distribution. So first, the P of X, meaning the probability of X, the X is whatever the data that you collect, the probability of X can only be between zero and one. It cannot be less than zero, meaning your probability cannot be a negative, and it cannot be bigger than one, meaning again, your probability does not exceed one. And the sum of all probability, the total of all probability have to be equal to one. So it's the same property that we did earlier. It's the same property that we did before in terms that whatever you try to find, the probability that you try to find is will be between zero and one, and the summation of everything will be equal to equal to one. Okay, so looking at this thing here, this is your. Before we take a look at the probability distribution, let's remind us or uh, remind you what is the difference between or how to determine if you have a discrete data versus continuous data. So in terms of this item A, B, A to E, they ask you to determine if this is a continuous data or is this a discrete data. The amount of rain during the next thunderstorm. So the amount of range, we know that this is not a fixed number in terms that it can be one feet, four inches height, right? Uh, in terms of the amount of, of, of rain here, we have different units in terms of the volume to, to, to measure. So if we have a multiple, if we have an interval, we can see that this item is a continuous variable or continuous data, right? The height, similarly to the amount, the height of the student, uh, he can be six feet, three inches height, right? Or you can break that to centimeter or meter. You can break that to different unit, meaning there is an interval. He is not really exactly six feet and four inches, right? Uh, two and a half or something in terms of nature because you can break down to different interval, then they are continuous. They don't have a fixed number, right? And, and see, with that say, the number of people 
in line. So the number of people in line, this is a fixed number in the sense that it's a counting, right? You can either have zero people in line, one person in line, two people, three, four. You don't have seven and a half of a person, right? We, we count either one person or none, right? So again, in the sense of that, the number is discrete. And the time is take for you, the time is an interval in terms of hour, minute, second, minute, second, in terms that you can break down, they are continuous. And the number, so if you look at this thing here, yes, most of the time when it's a number of something, the number of pet, the number of brother you have, the number of sister, the number of call, when it's due with a number is most likely will be your discrete because the number cannot be uh, half of something, right? The item, the number of item cannot be half of the item. It's either the whole or nothing, okay? Um, so in chapter five, we deal with discrete. In chapter six, we will deal with continuous data. So let's take a look at what we have. Or uh, if you look at this item here, they ask you if we give you a table, if you, we give you this table, can you recognize, can you identify if this table is a probability distribution or is it not a probability distribution table, right? So look at this thing here. My data is, again, this is, doesn't matter what this data is. This data can be the number of, of call each household have, right? Uh, they can have one call, two call, three call, four call, right? So whatever this data is, that can be any number they want it to be. So in order to be a probability distribution, reminder, they need to fit these two criteria. The two criteria they need to meet is they need to have your probability have to be between zero and one. And the summation of all of the probability, you add all the probability up, is have to be equal to one. If you look at that, you can see that criteria one does not met, right? Criteria one tell us that the probability have to be between zero and one, and in this thing here, the probability have a negative item. Negative item meaning is less than zero. So as you can see, if the criteria one does not met, then this is not a probability distribution. Even though criteria two met, right? Criteria two, the summation, if you add all this thing here is equal to one, it doesn't matter. They need to be both, right? They need to be uh, between zero and one for each individual probability and the sum of all probability have equal to one. So they need to have both. Because one of this thing does not met, then this whole item is not a probability distribution, okay? And similarly, similarly, if we have this item here, reminder is doesn't matter what your data is. Your data can be negative. I don't care about my data. Well, no, I don't care, but for this example, your data does not illustrate anything. The first thing we want to look at is, does any of your probability, does any of this individual probability bigger than one or smaller than zero? As you can see, they are not, right? They are between zero and one. So we know that the first criteria met. And now the second criteria, if you add this up, 0 0.17, 0 0.25, 0 0.31, if you add all this thing up, is it equal to one? As you can see, they met both criteria. And because they met both criteria, we know that this is a, we can say, yes, this is a probability distribution, okay? So question in terms of A and B, how does one is probability distribution versus the other one is not a probability distribution here? Uh, for A, when you add all of those up, you get more than one, don't you? For B, the uh, probability. Letter A, problem two. For A, for A of? Le letter A, problem number two. If you add all those up, the probabilities on the right side of the box, you get more than one. Should not be more than one. Uh, okay. You have to use that a negative, right? So if you add 25 to, to this, that will give you 90. 90 okay. plus 
0.4 okay. will give you 1.3 and 1.3 minus 0.3, you still get one, right? You have okay. to use this as a negative number. So you have to subtract oh, this subtract. greater than that. Sorry. Right. Because of the negative, you have to subtract them. Okay. All right. So same thing go, right? Um, so they have to fit both criteria in order to be a probability distribution. And if you glance at C, if you glance at C, you can see that this is not a probability distribution. First of all, this thing here, one of the probability is bigger than one. We know that is a big no-no. There's no way you can find a probability bigger than one for our definition, right? The second thing is if you add this together, if you add this together, well, one of them is bigger than one, and none of them is negative. If you add this together, it will be more than more than one. So as you can see, both description does not fit, right? And again, we don't need both description. We only need one description. If one description does not fit, the whole thing is not a probability distribution, okay? So again, um, this thing here, even if you add more than one, it's, you know, it, it doesn't make any difference because one of them does not fit. It's still not a probability distribution. Okay. In order to be probability distribution, it has to be both. It's got to be between zero and one for every p of x, and it's the sum of every p of x is have to be equal to one. So that's no, that's the idea of a probability distribution. Okay. And again, you you will encounter some of this problem, but the main problem you will encounter is something like this. What if they ask you to construct the probability distribution? Right. Well, not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Let's take a look at this item here. What if they give you this and they ask you to find the individual probability, find the criteria that they want? So if you look at this thing here, you know, most of the time when they ask you to find the probability of something, they probably will give you the probability distribution. And if you want to, you can see the P of X, all of the P of X, none of them is between, is smaller than zero and none of them is bigger than one. So we know that the first criteria work out. And if you add 0 0.21, 0 0.43, 0 0.26, if you add all of this together, it should be equal to one. So we know that this is a probability distribution, okay? And they say that they give you the probability distribution as follow. But again, let's take a look at this data. What is the data do with this distribution? This data, they tell us that I, we have four patients going into four appointment to check for their blood pressure, right? And this is the number of the patient. Zero patients have a blood pressure and the problem with none of them have blood pressure is 0.21 which is 21% that none of the four have blood pressure. One of them, doesn't matter which one, but one of them have blood pressure, the probability will be 0.43, which is 43%. Two of them have blood pressure is 0.26. Three of them have 0.08 as a probability. And all four of them have blood pressure, high blood pressure is, um, is uh, 0.02, okay? So again, this number is the number of patients out of the four, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't know which one, but we just know that one of them out of four, two of them out of four, three of them, four of them out of four. So now they give you this probability, they give you this data, and they ask you find the probability of four patients. Four out of four, what is the chances of four out of four people have high blood pressure when they go to check the blood work, right? So look at this item. All we need to do is, again, my X is four, right? So the probability of four out of four will be 0.2, and that's all there is, which is the probability of four out of four of them have 0.2 uh, in terms of the chances of all four of them have high blood pressure is 0.02 or 2%. And again, this is your unusual event, right? Unusual meaning is less than 0.05. But again, uh, looking at this item, this is all we're doing is if they give you the distribution, you don't need to find the probability. Back then in chapter four, they give you the raw data. Then you have to find the probability. But if they give you the probability and they ask you to find the probability, all you need to do is ask yourself what fit that criteria, right? So they ask you find the probability of one or three. So one or three, as you can see, one or three, this are mutually exclusive, meaning again, it's either be once one person have high blood pressure 
or three people have high blood pressure, you cannot have one and also three, right? You either have one or three, okay? So again, in terms of this thing here, because they are mutually exclusive, all you need to do is add the two item 0.43 plus 0.08, and that will give you 0.51. Uh, so the probability that either one out of the four or three out of four have high blood pressure is 51% or 0.51. Okay, so to connect this to your previous chapter, chapter four, right? Uh, the two items does not intersect. They give you the individual, individual probability. So because they give us the individual probability, all we need to do is just add them together that either one or three, okay? And looking at this item, find a property of more than one. Reminder, what fit the description more than one? Well, more than one, meaning the two patient, the three patient, and the four patient, right? Meaning two out of four, or three out of four, or four out of four patient have high blood pressure. So reminder, more than one, we do not include the one. And if we don't include the one, we just add the two, add the probability of the three, add the probability of four, and this will give me point. Six, meaning the probability of two of them or three of them or four of them have high blood pressure is 36% or 0.36, okay? So question so far, if we give you this distribution, how to use this distribution to find the criteria that they ask you? And lastly, what do we do if we have at least one well, we can connect this to our previous chapter to find the at least one is you take one minus the none. Well, what is the probability of none of the four have high blood pressure? Well, probability of none, none meaning zero of the four have high blood pressure is 0.21. And one minus that to give me 0 0.79. Or if you take a look at this item here, do you agree that at least one, at least one meaning, I mean, at least one meaning again, one, include one, two, three, and four. Meaning at least one, you can take the one, you can add them up, add the one, add the two, add the three, add the four. If you take this item, you add them up, it should give you 0.79. So either way you do it, again, uh, we do this formula if we don't have the distribution, if we don't have the raw data. Um, if we have the raw data, you can see that what fit the description at least one? Well, at least one meaning the one, the two, the three, the four. At least one meaning either one or, or more. So in the sense, either way you do it, you still get the answer as in 0.79. And reminder, ladies and gentlemen, your answer, whenever they ask you for probability, your answer will never be bigger than one. So when you do the, the item, if it's bigger than one, you did something wrong, okay? So question with this item here in term of, in term of this example, that they give you a probability distribution and they ask you to use this probability distribution to find each criteria. This is what I, I mentioned earlier, what if, right? What if they don't give you the probability distribution and they ask you to construct the probability distribution, right? Number one, they ask you to construct the probability distribution for X. Number two, they ask you to find the probability of, of three goal will score. And number three, find the probability fewer than four goal will score. So, Look at this item, my data, again, whatever this data is, they give us, um, they say that the World Cup have been held every four years since 1930 to now, except 43 and 46, uh, 1943, 1946, because of the World War, right? The four table present uh, the number of goals scored by the winning team and consider, uh, consider the 19 game to be your population. Uh, so this is what we have is, again, there are 19 game, 
And the number of goal in each game for the winner, they can score one point, two point, three point, four point, or five point, right? One goal up to five goal. And there are three games that score one goal and they win. There are four games that score two goal and they win. There are seven games that score three goal and so on and so forth. So now they ask you to use in this data, this is your data, this is your raw data, and construct your frequency, not frequency, your probability distribution. And if you remember, I mentioned this in chapter three. To find this probability distribution, ladies and gentlemen, is the same as before when I asked you to find your relative frequency. So if we have the frequency, and I ask you to find the probability distribution, all you need to do is take the frequency and divide by the total frequency. Again, how many games that score one goal? Well, three. Well, to find the probability, we have to find three divided by the total, which is three divided by 19 to give me 0 0.1579. Same thing go, we take the four divided by 19, the seven divided by 19, the four divided by 19, and the one divided by 19. Again, it's just the same as your relative frequency. Again, we did this before last time, the, what we did this, we call this a relative frequency. And I told you guys that relative frequency and probability is the same thing, it's just different terminology, okay? So it's nothing new. And if you look at this thing here, you say, well, wait, 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 Mr. Tran, this thing is not equal to nine. This thing is not equal to one, right? Why is 0.999? The reason being is because this is a rational number and we round them up. Uh, we don't have a, a fixed number because this thing, the decimal keep going and going and going. So I round them up. And because I round them up, I'm off by 0 0.0001. But it's close enough, right? It's close enough to one. So, you know, we kind of let it slide, right? But again, this thing here, uh, because we round up, because we estimate, that's why the total is not equal to one. But yes, to be a probability distribution is the total probability have to be equal to one whole number, okay? Uh, just because we estimate them, that's why we off a little bit. But, you know, we can, we can still use in it. So looking at this thing here for A, uh, number one we did, this is your frequency distribution or your relative frequency distribution table, or now we say probability distribution. And now how do we find a probability of three goal? Well, probability of three goal, if you do it before, you will say seven divided by 19. Again, how many number of games have three goals? Seven divided by the total number of games. Our same idea here, we just extract what we find in terms of 0.3684. And how many, what is the probability of fewer than four? Remind of fewer than, meaning less than four. We do not include four. So this is the item that is fewer than four goals. And fewer than four goals, we take 0.3684 plus 0.2105 plus the 0.1579. If you add them all together, you will have 0.7368 meaning roughly 74% of the game score less than four goal. The winner score less than four goal, okay? So this is the idea is, is if we have the data or if we have a probability distribution, can we identify, can we extract out the probability to fit on the probability that fit the description that they ask you? So question here in terms of how to answer one, two, or three. Any question with this item? So if you don't have question, and hopefully you know, the item that we have is very doable or is easy for you guys. Um, the next three item that we have is, is probably the hardest one in 5.1. Um, is if we give you a probability distribution, how can or can you find me the mean of that probability distribution? 
okay? And that's the first thing that we will do is find a mean, whatever the data is, we need to find a mean. And to find a mean, this is what they tell you is take the data, take the X, multiply to it probability, and then add them up. So in the sense, this is your formula, the mu, the mean is the summation of X times P of X, which is you take your data, multiply to the probability, and whatever the result is, you take each of your data, multiply to each of the probability, and then you add them all together, and whatever that result will be your, your mean. Later on, later on with this chapter, and we probably will not cover this item uh, today, but later on you will see that the expected value is the same as your mean for your probability distribution. So if they ask you to find the expected value, it's the same question that they ask you to find uh, the mean. So to find the expected value, uh, the E of X, we basically take your X data, multiply to each probability, and then add them up, okay? So you will see that the expected value can be, meaning your mean can be positive, can be negative. If it's positive, meaning it's the gain. If it's negative, it's, it's the loss. So in this case here, your mu, meaning your mean, and your expected value can be a negative number. Your probability cannot, but your mu and your expected value can be a negative number, okay? So we will do a bit later with the mean. The second two item that is the hardest one that you will see, uh, is how to find the variance if we have a probability distribution and versus how to write a standard deviation. So to find a variance, to find a standard devi deviation is easy if we have the variance, we just take a square root, right? So to find a variance, if you were to do this by hand, if you were to do this by hand to find a variance, this is what they tell you that you need to do is you need to take each of your x minus the mu square them up, and then take that number, multiply to your probability, and then whatever the result is, you add them together, okay? And one thing is, if you do this by hand, you will see that this formula on above and this formula on the bottom is basically the same formula, but, the second formula here is easier to calculate than the first formula because it will have a less, a, a little less of the step. So they tell you that if you want to do calculate by hand, this is what you need to do is you take each of your X, square them up, multiply to the probability of that X, and then add them together. Whatever the result, whatever the summation of this item is, you subtract that to the mu square, which is the average square, okay? So we will take a look at this question a bit, but once we have the variance, once we have the variance, it's gonna be a smooth selling because if you take a square root of the variance, you will get your standard deviation. So to find the standard deviation is easy. Uh, to find the variance is a little bit tricky. Okay, uh, but let's take a look at this problem. Let's say that we have this item here. Let's say we have this item and they give you this information. Uh, they tell you that the following probability distribution is for the age of the student at a certain public high school. Uh, so in this high school, there are some 13 years old, there are some 14, there's some 15, 16, 17, and the oldest is 18 years old student. And the probability is underneath. And again, if you glance through, we can see that this is a probability distribution because first of all, the probability is not bigger than one and it's not smaller than zero. And if you add all this together, it should give you, it should give you equal to one, okay? So the question they ask us is, is not, is, it is a probability distribution or not, they ask us to find a mean, to find a variance, and to find a standard deviation. So how do we find a mean? Well, to find a mean, this is what you guys need to do is, the easiest way is to create a chart. 
And if you create the chart, the first item, which is your X, your data, my data is 14 to 18. And the second item is your P of X. I just basically flip this around and then turn it vertical, right? My X is my age and my P of X, which is my probability is this item here. So to find a mean is very easy. All they tell you to do is take 13 times the P of X. 13 times 0.08, that will give you 1.04. 1 14 times 0.24, that will give you 3.36. 15 times 0.23, 16 times 0.28, 17 times 0.4, and 18 times 0.02, I mean 0.03. And again, if you take the X and you multiply to the P of X, that's what they tell us to do. Take each of your X, multiply to that P of X, right? And if you do that, they tell you once you take, once you find the result, the only thing left you need to do is you need to summation them up. The summation meaning tell you to add the result up. And if you add the result up, this is your mean, ladies and gentlemen, your mean is 15.25. You take the X, you multiply to the P, you take the X, multiply to the P, you take the X, multiply to P, and then you add the result up. And if you add the result, you will get 15.25. Question here in terms of how to find a mean. Any questions so far of how to find a mean? multiply the x times the p of x, and then add the individual of them. Now, how do we find the variance? If you remember the variance I told you guys, or I told you that the variance, the easy formula is the summation of x squared times p of x. Whatever the summation is, subtract that to the mean square. We know the mean, all we need to do is we square this item, which is two, uh, 15 times 15, right? 15, 25 times 15, 25. That's what the mu square is. So that's not the hard part. The hard part is how do we find this summation here? Well, to do that, since we have the chart, since we have the chart, everybody say that all we need to do is take the X, right? Since we have the chart, all we need to do is take the X and that, is my x over there. Take the x and square them up. So my x is 13. 13 times 13 will give me 196. 14 times 14 to give me 169. 15 times 15 is 225 and vice versa, everything else below, right? And then that's not done. That's just the first item. Take the x square. What do we do next? We tell you that take that x square and then multiply the x square, multiply the x square to the p of x. So where is my p of x? My p of x is here. So they tell me take the x square, which is 169, multiply to 0 0.08 to give me 13.52. Take the 196, multiply to 0.24, and everything else is the same. So that is the first part. Take the x square, multiply to the p of x. The x square is here, the p of x is here. I basically just multiply them across. And if you multiply them across, they tell you you are not done yet because that's just the first step. We need to add this item because that's what the summation say. The summation tell you that to add this item. The parentheses stop here, so we just at those item and that item will give me will give me 234.7 sorry 17 and <clears throat> what do we do with that we need to take that item 234.17 minus the mu square what is my mu square well my mu square is 15.25 and 15.25, this is what I need to do, 234.17 minus 15.25 square. And if I subtract that, this will give me 1.6075. I think it's like 748 something, but again, 1.675. So, and again, I, I know you say, whoa, that's a lot of stuff, right? We need to find the x square. 
we need to find the x square and then we need to take the x square times the p of x and then we need to add them together and then we subtract the mu square which is 15.25 square and this ladies and gentlemen is your variance and if you can find a variance the standard deviation is easy why the standard deviation is easy because again what do i need to do if i have the variance i need to square root it so if i have the variance in this case the variance is 1.6075 i just need to take a square root of that and if i take a square root of that i will have 1.2679 uh, okay so this is what we have or, or this is what they will be asking you a lot is find the mean find the variance find the standard deviation for the probability distribution so question here in terms of how to find the variance how to find the standard deviation or how to find the mean for your probability distribution here So if you don't have a question, <clears throat> let's take a look at this item here. Um, well, what happened or how can we, how can we use and utilize our calculator to help us save some time, right? Because that's what we can do with our calculator. How can we utilize this calculator to save ourselves some time? And if we were to, if you have this calculator, right, <clears throat> what do we do? All you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is you need to go to stat. So this is what you have to do. You hit stat and then edit. Okay, let me clear. Again, my data, I, I do it before, but if you need to clear, this is what you need to do is you hit clear and you hit enter, right? So if you want to clear L1 and you want to clear L2, you hit clear and then enter. But this is what we have is if you have this item and you want to use your calculator to utilize it, this is what you need to do is for your X item. For your X item, you need to put in your L1 column. So whatever my X data is, I need to put in L1. So my L1, I will have 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So those are my data for my L1. And again, I, I did not have 18. 18, make sure you have your data out, uh, data correct. So those are my data, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then your L2 will be your P of X. So what is my P of X? My P of X is point. 0.8 for 13, 0.24 for 14, 0.23 for 15, 0.28 for 16, 0.14 for 17, and 0.03. So as you can see, I have six data on the left, which is 13 to 18, and I have six data on my right, which is the probability. So that's the first thing you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is you need to type in your L1 data for your X is your L1, and your L2 data is your probability. So question here in terms of how to type in, or what to type in L1 and what to type in L2. Again, your vertical item is basically, we flip them and when we turn them hard, uh, vertical, right? So once you have this data, once you have this data, you hit stat again, and you go over to calculate. Last time we edit, we over on this screen, we edit. Now we go to calculate. And ladies and gentlemen, all you need to do is using your one vol stat. And then you use your one vol stat. And once you type in your one vol stat, reminder that your list is L1. If you happen to don't have L2, if you don't happen don't have your L2 here. If your frequency list, you have to type in L2. And to type in L2, just like before, you hit second, number two. So if you have the TI-84, this is what you have is your list is L1 and your frequency list is L2. 
you tell the calculator, I have my data in my L1, I have my data in my L2, go ahead and calculate for me. And if you click on, click on the calculation or if you calculate, I about to see that this item here, what is X ball? Your X ball is 15.25 and your X ball is the same as your mu or basically your X ball is your mean. So your calculator calculate this for you. Your mean is 15.25. So you don't have to take the data, but you can, right? You take the data, multiply the probability, data, multiply probability, add the result up, and that will be your, your mean. So everybody see that your mean is your X ball here. And if you look at this item, and this is the thing about your calculator, ladies and gentlemen, your calculator do not give you the variance. Your calculator do not give you the variance what do they give you your calculator only give you the standard deviation so the standard deviation here is what they give you 1.26787223 that is your standard deviation we route it up down here you say well that's not the answer we have down here but we route it up right 1.26787 will give us 1.26789 Right, so that's your standard deviation. So what is the relationship relationship between your standard deviation versus your variance? Well, if they give you the standard deviation, what do we need to do to the standard deviation to find variance? We need to take the standard deviation. We need to take the standard deviation 1 1.26787223. We need to take the standard deviation and we square them. So 1.67872233 uh, and you square them, uh, 1.2, sorry, 1.26787233. And again, uh, this to show you that make sure to when you use your calculator, make sure you type in the right number, right? Um, don't depend on your calculator too much. Um, but uh, I did not square them. Square, right? 1.26787223 does is my standard deviation and the relationship between standard deviation to your variance is you square your standard deviation to give you variance and if you square them, you should get 1.075. Again, 1.607499, we round it up to 1.67075, okay? So one thing is, again, for those of you who, who say, wait a minute, Mr. Tran, I don't have TI-80, I don't have TI-80, um, 84, I have TI-83, how do I utilize my 83? Well, if you have TI-83 after you hit the, the one volt stat, after you hit the one volt stat, this is probably the screen that you see, right? Uh, after you hit one volt stat, probably this is what you see on your TI-83. Whoever have TI-83, you have one volt stat and blank. So if you have TI-83, you have to manually type in L1 comma L2. So you have to hit second number one for L1, comma right here, second number two. So again, if you have a TI-83, you have to manually tell your calculator, hey, I have my L1 and L2, go ahead and use L1 comma L2 and calculate for me. And then you press enter, they will give you the same item. And if you, saw that I used in the whole number. And please, ladies and gentlemen, you need to use as many decimal places as you can because you don't want to round up. You don't want to take this number. The one thing is you don't want to say 1.26787223. 1 square. 
you don't want to use in just the, the number because it will be a little bit different. As you can see, you have 1.60757. And if you kept the four decimal place, you will give me 1.6076. So the reason is because we estimate them, because we estimate them, make the number bigger, and then we multiply them, you will get a little bit bigger. That's why when you use this thing here, you want to use 1.26787223 and square that, right? <clears throat> you want to use as many decimal places as you can so that is, is, you, know, you only round as the last answer. You only round as your answer. You don't round along your procedure, okay? So um, that's what you have. And if you saw, if you saw that you say, well, I go a little bit fast with this, this table. Um, the reason is you don't really need to construct this table to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. Your calculator will help you out, right? Your calculator will help you find a mean, find a variance, and find a standard deviation. It's only, it's only that they give you the standard deviation and you need to square the standard deviation to to um to find the variance okay so i i have the 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 step here on the next slides but we can do this next time uh but this is the step uh if you need to to if you try to see oh how to type or how to use your calculator this is what you need to do is uh stat enter in l1 l2 in your edit mode and then press that l um go over to calculation and then one vol stat, right? And you need to manually, if you have TI-83, you need to manually type L1 comma L2 and then press enter. If you have the 84, make sure your frequency list is half L2, okay? So that is what we have, ladies and gentlemen, um, how to utilize your calculator to find your mean, as you can see, Given this problem here, you have the mean standard deviation, and then they ask you something else, right? So in this case, this is what we will be doing next time. Um, but question here, question on how to utilize your calculator or question of how that you don't know how to enter in your calculator. Any question at all, ladies and gentlemen? Well, if you don't have questions,